All right, guys, welcome back to the changelog once again. And today we actually have a very special changelog shoot. This is going to be our kind of like year in review session here. So we're going to talk about some of the cool stuff we saw and covered in the last year and kind of like what we might be looking forward to in the next year. So um, I'll start out with one, Jacob. Um, basically, I think one of the coolest things that I saw last year that we covered a little bit was some of the dev tooling that we that we looked at. So like we had Seahorse, we had um, like also some educational like dev tooling related stuff. Um, you know, there was also the newest reveal that I don't know if we covered in the video or not of the JavaScript library where you can write Solana programs. Um, Soul PG also for dev tooling. So really cool stuff. Like I feel like the dev tooling like community keeps getting stronger and we keep seeing more people pop up with ideas and like building cool stuff and like more and more useful ways to write Solana programs, to build D apps, to kind of like practice and learn. What do you think? Yeah. In the past year, there's been tons of improvements in tooling. It's like, if you think about a year ago at this time, we maybe had three different CLIs that could like build a basic anchor program, build the Solana program and create an NFT. It's, and then if you look at where we're at now, like we could write Solana programs in the browser. We can write programs in Python with Seahorse. Uh, we can build and generate uh, our own D app um, from scratch, like boilerplate, just with a single command. So really the tooling has upgraded dramatically. And just props also to Solana Playground. That's probably my favorite tool in the past year. It just has unlocked so many uh, different opportunities for especially new developers building on Solana to quickly get set up. And not only that, there's also a uh, there's a VS Code extension now to where you can use just VS Code along with like your Rust analyzer and a bunch of other extensions that you like to use and be able to write your your Solana your Solana program code immediately in there. That's a good shout out. Yeah, that's a good shout out. Shout out to Atron and to anybody who kind of like worked on that project because SoulPG is a big deal. Yeah, a huge deal. And then some other big changes that happen in the past year is like, hey, there are some changes of like, hey, uh, you can now use version transactions. So if you were to previously um, try to use a transaction that had like a ton of accounts, you're kind of limited because you, I think it was, you're only limited max 30 pub keys, but you probably use more than that. So that was a big deal. Um, and then there's one other like big deal is that like, hey, you could also do uh, priority fees now. Uh, so like you can basically prioritize your transaction amongst all the other ones on the network by just adding a little bit of soul to the transaction to put it yourself ahead. So that was really cool as well. Yep. Those are huge ones. Um, also some changes like to Solana source as well. We saw, um, the new token program token 2022. So I don't even think that's really been like unlocked completely yet as far as like the potential for what you can build on it. Like I think it's still so new. And um, you know, we're hopefully gonna be releasing a video talking to one of the engineers, John Sink, about some of the new features about that. So that'll be super cool. And um we wanna see some more projects with that. But we had that come out. Um and yeah, I think the priority fees stuff is is really cool that we got to see that in the in the version transactions and also the obvious one that we saw as well is quick. Um, we heard, and I think we covered on this video, um, series or whatever you want to call it, that we had like a vendor that we were working with that right after quick was implemented, they were extremely like impressed with some of the like reliability as far as like throughput and things like that. It's kind of cool. Worth mentioning. Yeah. And another thing that happened is that, uh, like the compute unit caps increased dramatically on transactions. So at the beginning of the year, you had 200K compute units, and that was it, that you're set and stuck at that. Um, you can't increase at all. Um, and now we have a max of 1.4 million. Uh, so between that and doing being able to do like address lookup tables with the version transactions, you have unlocked so much more potential on what you can do in your Solana program. So that is awesome. So Solana throughput is getting even larger and larger. Yes. <laughs> the amount of things <laughs> that you can do and causing throughput to change is getting a bigger, having a bigger impact. That's amazing. 
Uh, yeah. So there are some other changes that we're looking forward to in uh, relation to that. Like, so those things kind of unlock the ability to do more with your transaction. And there's still more coming in the future of like being able to give you more uh, breathing room to do more actions in a single transaction. So in the future where there's a lot of, uh, well, right now there's a lot of research on how to increase a transaction size. So we know like today the transaction cap is capped at 1232 bytes, um, really 1280, but there's some like header room there. Um, so in the future there, there's a lot of research on like, how do I increase that and have like double the transaction size or even like more? Uh, the exact amount that you might have in the future is still to do to be determined, but and like also how that increase happens. Uh, but it, it's going to unlock even more potential for Solana programs on what they can do, how they can interact with the user, and uh, the amount of different actions that someone can take on chain in a single transaction. That's super cool. I'm really glad you called that out because it's really like we're, we're kind of like almost just getting started in a way about the potential that you'll be able to build on Solana and, and like some of the different kinds of apps that you can build with what they can handle, like what kind of transaction size, like what that relates to how the app kind of like operates and like how the user experience kind of is and like how much stuff maybe costs for your users that have wallets connected. Like all that stuff is going to be subject to change for the better. So that's really awesome. Good to call that out. Um, an obvious one, too, that we're looking forward to is obviously anything mobile related because we've got Saga on the rise, right? SMS. And uh, we've talked about it many times. There's the Saga, yeah. We talked about it many times. And like, there's just going to be so many cool things that we're going to be able to do with like crypto apps that are native to mobile phones, right? Like, Not only are you going to be able to put your crypto apps in people's hands via the Saga device, but you also, like we talked with Andrew, which we got a video coming soon on, on some Saga stuff. Um, we talked about how like these apps are really mobile native, not just Saga native. So like it lays some really cool, like foundational groundwork for mobile crypto. And, um, you know, obviously like apps are kind of like engineered differently as far as their design and like how they reach people and do things when they're on a mobile device. So it's cool to see that being able to become a reality in some engineers' minds and, and some of their design flows. Yeah, for so long, crypto has been just like desktop only. Um, you got to lug around your laptop or like go home to get things done on your crypto. Like it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, so no. looking forward to that changing and actually people building like really cool mobile applications uh, that really like br can bring crypto to the masses. Uh, so, so some other changes that will probably be happening in the future is that like, Hey, there's also bankless leader, um, and, uh, asynchronous, uh, slot leaders as well. So bankless leader allows you to have basically the bank created, uh, elsewhere. And so the base, basically the leader doesn't have to worry about packing the blocks. It only has to worry about like validating the, the blocks and validating the transactions. So this is kind of seen as a way to increase throughput on the network dramatically. Um, so currently, like the 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 way that people are estimating each slot time is 400 milliseconds. In the future, uh, with Bankless Leader and more, it might be less. It might even be like 200 milliseconds uh, per slot, which is twice as fast. Wow, that's awesome. That's a super yeah. cool one to look forward to. There's also um, the changes that are coming to the proposal process too. So like, there's going to be a more like, arguably more transparent, but probably a little bit more robust like process for introducing proposals to the Solana network and and kind of like going through them and making them something that people are comfortable with, kind of like drafting and talking about and weighing in on and stuff like that. And it'll be a little more formal. Um, you're kind of involved with that process, aren't you, Jacob? Yeah, so the Solana Improvement Documents, or SIMD, 
Um, they're like uh, they're very similar to what you would expect, like EIP, um, but a little bit more relaxed and allow you to work faster. Uh, so you can see that today if you go to the Solana Foundation, GitHub Org, and Solana uh, Improvement Documents. You can see all the different documentation and improvement proposals being put out right now. I believe as of recording, there's like 10 of them um, being built right now. It's like, hey, there's a lot of really cool things to read about and changes that could come onto the network. And you can read about them all right there in one single place. Um, and in, in line with that, uh, in the new year, we'll there is actually going to be like a core community call as well. Um, so there is one, uh, as of recording, it'll be this week, but whenever this goes live, it'll be previous to, to now of like, Hey, you can have a, there's a place where the core contributors on the Solana protocol can discuss and talk about new improvements and technical details. Uh, and then it's open to the public so that public can view it and give questions and like have a Q and a session at the end where like, Hey, what happened uh, or on the Solana? What is this? What does Bankless Leader mean? Could you go in depth with that? Like, what are your plan? What are your plans for that? All of that is coming, um, and it will be a much more open way of like one being able to see insight of like how development on Solana is happening, and two, it's a, like an avenue for people that maybe they're not a contributor today, but they can see they can see like, oh, these are the problems people are voicing in the core community call and maybe they can go try their hand at building it them or fixing the problem themselves um, so it's a new avenue for people to become contributors in the future as well that's awesome that's huge that's going to do a lot for people that because there's a ton of people who really just want to be involved in any way shape or form and that'll make life a lot easier for them um before we wrap up i want to just ask you um what as far as like dev tooling, that was the first thing that we talked about. Um, what do you think would be some of the coolest like dev tooling improvements or enhancements or even just like all around new tools that you would want to see in 2023? What do you think? Cool. So one thing that I'll, I'll first mention was out today, and then like a thing that we can even improve on is uh, Anchor has a way that you can list all the accounts to within a that I believe it's like the YAML or the Toml. Uh, so that you can list all the accounts that you want to copy from mainnet on your test load or something like that. Um, so that's that's really awesome. You can also do this with the Solana CLI today. Whenever you load up a test validator, you just add all the arguments to load your separate accounts. Awesome. A way to kind of improve them on that and like more create a better tool that will allow development and testing and also composability uh, on different programs is like, hey, what if we had a framework that allowed you to one like just in a single YAML say like uh, for OpenBook I want to in a single YAML give all the accounts to trade on the sole USDC market in DevNet um, and so I put that all in a single YAML but then I also give instructions on how to run the the crank and say it comes with like a Docker container uh, next to it and so whenever you load it uh, from like a root directory it'll load up. Uh, open book with the cranks and you'll automatically be able to use basically what open book is on mainnet on your local and so you can do this with multiple programs so like you have your yaml for open book you have your yaml for mango you have your yaml for jupiter um, and that way like hey as protocols um, that want people to build on top of them they can just publish that yaml and like the associated like web2 uh, infrastructure in like a Docker file, and then anybody can test on those different a applications or programs on chain immediately on your local. Um, you don't have to go to mainnet. You have a lot more power on what you can build locally. So that would be something really cool that I am looking forward to seeing coming out in the new year. Dang, that's a good one. So if you had like multiple cranks you wanted to include, you could just have like multiple Docker containers. Yep. And then so like Docker, <laughs> Docker meets Solana. Let's go. The no, no, but it's more like, Hey, you can basically, you can just like, say you have a framework that in the root directory, you just run it and it will look in all of your, uh, child directories for this YAML and the associated Docker and it creates a Docker network, runs all the cranks and loads all the pro the accounts and programs whenever you load your local test validator. Um, just a simple way to put it. 
Yeah, that's a really good one. Very detailed, too. I like it. Somebody should be taking notes. Been thinking um, about it for a while. Yeah, I could tell. <laughs> for me, I've got, I think, two that are a little more general than that. I think the, the two things I would like to see get some love for um, dev tooling. One is going to be like dynamic, like relational data on Solana. So like the way PDAs and like the seeds and everything you use to create them are set up, it's actually poised to have really good relationships between your data. And mind you, some people are already using this and probably doing a great job of it. But I think for somebody who maybe doesn't have experience with that kind of stuff, for somebody who's like a little newer and like still figuring out how to write like Solana programs and deal with all these program derived addresses, it'd be kind of cool to see like some tooling around basically I don't want to consider it like an ORM, but like almost like basically you're kind of like helping abstract away some of the mapping of your data. Maybe you use like some IDs or whatever, and you can sort of relate different tables, almost like SQL, SQL on a, something like that. <laughs> so that would be kind of cool. And then I also think it would be neat to see some better interoperability between what's in your program and what's in your client, like in your app. So we've already got IDLs and that kind of changed the game. But I would love to see like more stuff being built on that concept, right? Like when I build this this Rust program, whether it's Anchor, whether it's Native, whether it's Seahorse, you name it. Um, once I'm finished, like I should easily be able to create code on my client side and get everything from like type sensitive, like VS Code, like messages or whatever, right? Like autocomplete things like that. Um, like I said, I know there's a lot of good stuff with Anchor's IDL stuff already, but I think there can be a lot more built on that that would help. You can just whip together client-side code for your program a lot easier and other programs too. Yeah, that would be really cool. Um, I know there's a lot of work being done right now to like standardize the IDL to actually make these types of things possible in the future. Um, but yeah, cool. so thank you all for viewing and being with us with Changelog this year. Uh, looking forward to the more changes and more developments on Solana in the new year. Y'all have a good one. Yep. Enjoy the holidays. Later, guys. 